Hi, students. Today we're looking at probability and heredity. Probability is a pretty standard thing. You've probably heard a little bit about it before. It's like if you flip a coin, half of the time you're going to get heads, half of the time you should get tails. So we reflect probability as a number, the likely results over the total number of results. So three out of four is the same as a 75% chance. So that's pretty much how we reflect probability as numbers, as a percentage or as a fraction of what may happen. Now an important thing about probability is independence of events. This is really important. Every year I have students who try to make math look really, really, really crazy when they have a very simple question. If a woman has three boys, what are the odds that her fourth boy, or her, I'm sorry, her fourth child will be a boy? That's important because when you think about coin flips, if you flip heads five times in a row, what are the odds that the sixth time is going to be heads? Every depend or every event is independent. So this last child being born doesn't know that the previous four were boys. The coin does not know how many times it's come up heads or tails. Every event has the same odds. A coin flip is always 50% for that individual event. Doesn't matter what has happened before or after unless you're using a rigged coin with two heads. So that's independence of events. Now, we're going to look at probability in genetics because when we do our calculations for Punnett squares and things, frequently we have Punnett squares come out with answers in nice fours. So I'm going to whip up a Punnett square real quick here. And there's my Punnett square. And as I am crossing some individuals, let's say that for our purposes the dominant big R is going to be red flower. Little r will be white flower, which is recessive. And remember, dominant and recessive, if there is a big R, that flower is going to be red. It has to have two little r's for the flower to be white. So we're going to cross a pure red times a hybrid. So we've got pure or heter or homozygous red times a heterozygous. So we put one up here, one allele over each row of boxes for one parent, and then one allele to the side of each row of boxes for the other parent. Then we simply pull them down. I'm going to start with these. Now if it's a capital, put it in the first spot. If it's a lower case or a recessive trait, put it in the second spot because remember that uh, the capitals, the dominants, always have to go in first spots. So if we've got a lower case, put them over here so we have space to put our upper cases when and if they arrive. And here it is, a big R that needs to go here and here. Same over here. So we just pull down the trait from the top down then pull over the trait from the left over and that gives us all the possible individuals. So we can see here that we have a 50% chance of getting a pure bred red or a homozygous red and a 50% chance of getting a heterozygous individual, which of course will also be red because the capital R, that's dominant. Now suppose we do this with a different cross. So we'll whip this out real quick. So let's say that instead we're going to cross a big R, little r, times a little r, little r, a pure white. So I put one individual up here the other individual down here. I'm going to start with him. Remember, since they're lowercase, start them in the second spot unless it's already filled. This one too. From the left over, and then from the top down. A big R, which of course gets the first spot because we left it open. And a little r, which can get the first spot because there's already a little in the second. And that shows us we got a 50% chance from this cross of a red hybrid times a pure white. 50% chance of a red hybrid so we'll say that's a 50% big R, little r, and 50% white, which of course is little r, little r. So this is how we calculate the odds of getting a certain result. So if we do 1,000 plants, we should get, in theory, about 500 of these and about 500 of these. 
won't be exact because the events are independent and it is totally random. So we might have 580 of these and 420 something of these. But we're going to get close to that same ratio because the odds should follow what we find in our crosses. 50-50 mix for this cross. Now we can do bigger Punnett squares, but we're not going to look at that in this lesson. So we predict our probabilities. Now we need to talk about phenotype and genotype. Pretty important idea. Phenotype is the organism's physical appearance. What he looks like that you can see from the outside. The best way to remember this, pH. pH here too. Phenotype is physical. So that's what he looks like on the outside. You cannot tell what two alleles he's carrying. You can tell if he has a dominant because he'll have a dominant look, but we can only really tell if it's a dominant or recessive by looking at the outside. The genotype is what's in the genes. And of course, when I say genes, I'm meaning DNA. So this is the actual two letters. So for our previous example, we might have a red flower. That's his physical appearance. That's his phenotype. We can't tell if he's a hybrid red or a purebred red, but we can tell that he's red. But down here, a genotype will tell us for sure. It's a red flower because it has two dominants. Or it's a red flower because it has a dominant or a recessive. So any time on the test or in a worksheet it asks for a genotype, you've got to give me the letter combination, the genes. Any time it asks for a phenotype, I need you to give me the physical appearance. What does it look like because of those genes? So if it says the flower has this genotype, what's this phenotype? Your answer is going to be red. Not big R, big R, okay? Because they already gave you that. So they might ask, what are the phenotypes for these in the Punnett square, and what are the genotypes for these in the Punnett square? That's a two-part question, so you got to tell me what they look like and what their genes are. That's pretty important. Last thing is codominance. Get this right here. Codominance. Co means to share the dominance. That means we can have traits, and both traits are dominant, which means they can both show at the same time. A good example of this in your book is the rooster. Feather black and feather white, and we show that with a superscript. A superscript is above the regular script or above the regular letter. So FB is black, and notice it's a capital F, so that tells us it's dominant, and FW Feather white, of course, is white. You can say F W or F white or feather white or F black. There's a whole variety of ways you can uh, say it, and it's all correct. So when we do these guys in our Punnett square, not as nice as my last one, but it'll work. Let's say we've got our pure black chicken who's feather black, feather black. And here we've got our feather white, feather black. This chicken is black and white. Then we simply copy them down. I'll always go with alphabetically for the superscript, so B's before W. F, B, F, W, a black and white chicken. Then F, B, F, B, a pure black chicken. Then another F, B, F, W, black and white. And then another F, B, F, B another pure black chicken. So that gives us a 50-50 mix of black and white versus black. Now if these have been FW, FW, it's a pure white chicken. So we can have white, black and white, or pure black. So that is a slightly more complicated way that we can have genes arranged. And of course, there's no real limit to this. There could be four codominant alleles, but you could only have two at a time. So if this chicken had black, white, red, and yellow, he could only have like red and black or white and yellow at any given time because he only has two spots for these alleles. So you only get two. 
So you have to choose the two colors that can go in there. You can't have all three unless those are controlled by different genes. That means they'll have different letters. Okay? And we'll see instances where this might be black, that might be white, and then the recessive, lowercase f, is brown. And of course, like usual, the recessive doesn't show up if any of these dominants are there. So an FB little f, that's a black. An FW little f, that's a white chicken. But a little f, little f, is a brown chicken. So let's keep in mind that we can have codominants mixed with extra alleles to give us more variety. And we can have recessives mixed with our codominant alleles also. But the recessives act like normal recessives because even though these have codominant features, they are still dominant over a recessive if there is one for that gene. So that is codominance means these two traits can share dominance, and that's how we have black and white on a rooster, or sometimes in horses we'll have both red and white hairs mixed on a horse instead of in patches uniformly mixed over the animal. So codominance is the next more advanced way that we can get a large amount of variety, and this is leading into the way that we can get so much variation in humans. You realized that standard recessive and dominant behavior is not enough to explain the variety in people. So this is one step towards explaining that amount of variety. And that'll conclude this video on section two, and we'll look for section three very soon.